Namaste. So today I was thinking over what happened to me the other night. I made a video about it, if you haven't seen it. And this led to some deep thoughts about the relationship between matter, energy, and consciousness. So, those of you who weren't completely asleep in high school a science class have heard this E equals MC squared. But how many of you know what it means? <laughs> Goddess is dropping in for a visit here. <laughs> I love living right across the road from a temple. I just love it. Anyway, we're going to be talking about her, so I guess she's interested. <laughs> e equals mc squared means, basically, that matter and energy are the same thing. Matter is simply frozen energy. And when you unfreeze matter, it radiates as energy. And the amount that radiates, the amount of energy radiated is determined by the constant C squared, which is the speed of light multiplied by itself. So even a small amount of matter contains a huge amount of energy. Nevertheless, if we look at the energetic nature of the human being, the energy body, or prana sharira, or prana uh, kosha, we see it is composed of six chakras and the shushumna, which is something else. So, these six chakras vibrate at different frequencies of energy, life energy, kundalini. And the lower physically in the body the chakra is located, the lower the energy level, and hence the lower the frequency. So this is probably all stuff that you've heard before. Huh? But how does it actually work? Well, how it works is that each of the centers in the body needs energy at the corresponding frequency to be nourished. And if you don't get that energy to it, then it's not going to be able to operate at its maximum energy level maximum efficiency or whatever. For example, we eat food. Huh? The stomach is empty, so we feel hungry. And we eat some food, and it goes in the stomach, and then the stomach feels satisfied. Or maybe we're running or exercising or something, working hard, and the lungs feel unsatisfied, so we take a breath. Now, the lungs are higher in the body than the stomach. The stomach takes solid, which is earth energy, and liquid, which is water energy. Or actually, when I say earth, water, and so on, these are states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and so on. So, when we take in air, we're taking in a gas, which is less dense, more high vibration, and, and actually greater energy than the food. And the proof of this is that if we're deprived of food for several weeks, we can die. If we're deprived of water, for even just a few days would die. 
but without air, we can't survive even five minutes. So is there any food that's higher than air? Well, as it turns out, there is. <laughs> Just as the, the uh, lungs and the throat deal with the air element, the eyes and the third eye, and of course the mind, deal with impressions. Impressions are units of consciousness. The Buddha said there are six kinds of consciousness. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, skin consciousness, and consciousness of the mind. He might as well have said impression consciousness or thought consciousness, because that's what they are. That's all the mind is. It's an assembly of thoughts. The brain is the physical interface between the mind and the senses, but the mind itself is very subtle. So this subtle mind has to receive impressions. In other words, it has to be conscious of something. Or else what happens? We immediately go unconscious. If the interface, for example, uh, by a head injury, if the interface is interrupted or disabled, we immediately go unconscious. But in deep sleep, in Shushupti, we're conscious, but we're conscious <laughs> of nothing. That's the difference. At all times, as long as we are in the body, as long as our life persists, we are receiving impressions in the mind through consciousness. Six kinds of consciousness. And this also holds true to the same law that the higher in the body the chakra is, the greater the energy is involved. If you want to cause a riot, if you want to cause a, an explosion huh, in human society, all it takes is a particular kind of information, a certain kind of impression. You see, and as the impressions get higher and higher, then the parts of the mind that they deal with also increase in subtlety and power. So for example, the stomach is satisfied by food. The lungs are satisfied with air. The mind is satisfied with sense impressions, but the intelligence requires something more. The intelligence requires something like dedication to a great cause or something very beautiful, aesthetics. See, the intelligence is higher than the mind. The mind is satisfied if it can just get some sense impressions. Huh? And so we try to feed it all kinds of impressions. But the intelligence wants something of higher quality, of higher energy. And that means impressions or thoughts that have great meaning. And the greater the meaning, the more the satisfaction of the intelligence. So then you might ask, well, what about consciousness itself? But see, consciousness is actually two things. It's duality. It's always awareness of an object. So there's the person that's conscious, the subject. There's the object that they're conscious of and then there's the consciousness itself. So we had a series on Drig Drishya Viveka. Drig is the seer. Drishya is that which is seen. And Drishyate is the act of seeing. So in this way, 
There's a fundamental trinity at the basis of all reality. Subject, object, and perception. This is consciousness. Is there anything even higher than that? Yes. Pure awareness. This is Brahman. Consciousness is Saguna Brahman. Awareness plus an object. But pure Brahman is Nirguna Brahman. Consciousness or awareness without an object. Awareness that is only aware of itself, that it is, and that it is aware. And this is the highest satisfaction. So just like when we take in any kind of matter, food, or energy, uh, it tends to devolve to a lower level of energy. This is called entropy. For example, when we take food and water, it devolves into waste products. And in the process, we extract energy to run the physical plant of the body. The body is a heat machine. It works by burning food, oxidizing it with the oxygen that we take in through our lungs. But in the process, the food itself is reduced in nutrition, reduced in energy, until when it finally comes out as waste, we don't want to have anything to do with it. So the same is true of impressions. I'll give you an example from music, because I happen to be a musician. When I'm working on a composition, first I hear it in my mind and it's in its pure state. It's in a, a pristine state of pure expression. But then, in order to make a physical artifact, a recording, it has to come down in energy and complexity and beauty and everything associated with energy. Huh? It has to be reduced in energy by entropy until it can be put into some kind of musical form. And that means selecting a particular instrument and making chords and melodies and rhythms, all these forms. And in this way, the subtle, almost formless inspiration of the music is broken down into a clear-cut form and then committed to a recording. And it always <laughs> sounds different from the inspiration, the subtle inspiration perceived by the intelligence. The intelligence is never satisfied with the final product because it heard it in its pure state, its pristine state. So just like the energy we take in in the form of food and water, when it comes out, when it's done being processed, <laughs> We don't really, we can't really enjoy it anymore. In the same way, these beautiful ideas and inspirations, when they first come into the intelligence, are much more satisfying to the intelligence than the final product. When the final product finally comes out, it's at a much lower energy level than when it was originally perceived by the intelligence. So you see, this is true of everything. And... You know, I always save the best for last, right? There is a complete gap between matter and energy and consciousness. In other words, consciousness can never be reduced to anything else. Consciousness is absolute or actually awareness is absolute. Once consciousness becomes associated with an object, it becomes actually covered. It takes the form of that object and the qualities of that object. And so it appears to become degraded, but actually it never becomes degraded. 
Consciousness is always consciousness. And just like the stomach has to be satisfied by food, the lungs by air, the mind by impressions, and the intelligence by great purposes and thoughts and inspirations. Similarly, the consciousness can only be satisfied by other consciousness. And this is one of the reasons why we crave relationship with other sentient beings. Huh? We want to play with that other consciousness. We want to relate with that other consciousness. And of course, there are innumerable ways that that can happen. But the ultimate and most satisfying of all the possibilities of relationship of consciousness is when the individual consciousness comes into touch, into contact with the absolute consciousness. In other words, the jiva, the soul, the antakarana, the subtle being within, comes into contact with Brahman, either Saguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman. And this is also the perfection of self-realization. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.